Welcome back to the last video, lecture video for chapter 8. There's a couple more example videos that are from this section, but we'll be wrapping up the concepts of this chapter um, in this uh, video. So what we have left are two-dimensional collisions and then a brief discussion of rockets and how they relate to momentum and collision ideas. So when we have a new collision type, or when we have a new problem type in general, we want to make sure we understand how our standard problem solving process just gets adjusted a little bit. And in two dimension collision problems, there's not a whole lot of adjustment to have to do. We just have to make sure that we handle vectors the way that we've been handling them since chapter three. If we see a vector at an angle, we break it up into components, into X components and Y components. That means if something's already moving perfectly sideways, it's not at an angle, it's already just an X component. If something is moving perfectly up and down, it's not at an angle, it's already just a Y component. But when we have any of the angles in between, we know how to do this breakdown using sine and cosine from all the practice we've had since chapter three to now. The only thing that happens to our equation is now we have to deal with X and Y pieces. And so now our subscripts start to look pretty messy. We have to make sure we know how to distinguish between object one and object two. We have to know how to distinguish between the initial situation, zero or not, and the final situation, F, and we have to now distinguish between the x direction and the y direction. So there's three little pieces on those um, velocity parts that the easiest thing to do is what we already started to see in example problems of making a list of the given information, just making sure to be really careful in listing out everything based on if it's an x piece or a y piece. Beyond that step, there is nothing new or different about these collisions. So we have two separate example problems that each have their own um, example problem videos that will go through and make sure that we understand how our um, understanding from the early parts of the chapter will still help us handle these two dimensional collision problems. A lot of it requires a reminder that once we have a final X velocity and a final y velocity, we have to put them back together in a triangle. Again, something that we've been working on since chapter three, but it's gonna be um, here in example 8h and example 8i. So they each have their own videos that will be following this one. That's it for that section. And so we move on to our last piece of the chapter, which is rockets. All right, so, to introduce rockets, we have this um, man who has volunteered to stand on some ice and hold a yellow shoe, right? Because why wouldn't you? What happens, this is a um, just quick check to see if we can think about what happens for rockets um, with a much, much simpler example. What happens if this man who's standing on a nice frictionless surface throws the shoe to his right or our right? Where will he go? Does he go nowhere? Does he move to the right? Does he move to the left? Or do we need more information? So think about it for a second. He'll move in the opposite direction. This is, at its very core, just a simple recoil problem. If we start with nothing moving, then we start with no total momentum. And if all of a sudden we're showing throwing a shoe to the right, that's mass that's moving to the right, which means we need some mass that's moving to the left. He'll move slower, but he'll start moving. Rockets are actually not that much different than that core idea. We can think of all of that rocket fuel as being a whole bunch of yellow shoes that are just being thrown out the back of the rocket. And that's kind of what it is. It's a whole bunch of different um, atoms of uh, the gas that's being heated up in the engines that is actively being thrown in one direction, sent out the exhaust pipe, so that the um, rocket can move in the opposite direction. 
So maybe the next time you see a rocket, you'll just pretend that there's a whole bunch of yellow shoes coming out the bottom. So when we launch really impressive rockets like this, see that yellow glow is just all those shoes. When we launch really impressive rockets like this, the thing at the core that is causing them to move upwards into their intended orbit is momentum conservation. Now, the idea behind momentum is that there's mass times velocity, and rockets are a lot of mass, which means that that gas at the, um, the rocket fuel that's being used has to be moving at extremely high speeds, and there does need to be a lot of mass that is being sent out the back of the rocket in order to get it to move. So one of the common misconceptions when rockets were first thought of, um, and not yet a technology we had the ability to deal with, is that people thought rockets would not work in space because they thought we needed to be pushing against the air in the atmosphere in order to get something to move forward. But all we need is that change in momentum. That man who volunteered on the um, ice could have been in space, probably something more exciting to volunteer for, and thrown that shoe in one direction and he'd go floating off in space in the opposite direction. We don't need the air in order to have this work. So why, um, why stop with just big scale rockets? We've got lots of examples that are kind of rocket propulsion ideas that again are just coming down to this idea of momentum conservation starting from rest and having some stuff move in one direction and the rest move in the opposite direction. So the first two on this picture, uh, on this slide, the first two pictures are ones that you can try at home. Please do not use any fire extinguishers for at-home experiments. But in the first two examples, the ones that are safe, if you fill a balloon with air and you hold that shut, you now have all of your rocket fuel ready to be thrown out the back. And as long as you are dealing with not too much friction, you'll be able to see that, um, that object that we can pretend is a rocket um, move in the opposite direction. And there's plenty, of, um, there's plenty of videos that you can look up online if you want to um, see this in action without having a balloon and a straw and some string at home. That middle picture is actually a um, rocket car that we used to do all the time for our community science days, and hopefully we'll be able to do that in future years too. And then large scale physics um, departments that have like massive, massive lecture halls of 200 students. Um, they also tend to have um, fire extinguisher rocket cars um, that are used as demonstrations, but please don't do that at home. Okay, so this is all exciting and fun. Why aren't we doing rocket problems in the homework? Well, let's think back to that idea of losing all of those shoes. We are now changing the total amount of mass that we are trying to move as the rocket begins to launch. It started with full fuel tanks. It loses mass as it sends it out. And so that smoothly changing mass really requires calculus to be able to handle properly. Our textbook has a simplified formula that can be used in very small circumstances, but we'll just notice that it's there and we won't try to apply it to anything um, in a very similar way to the drag force concept from chapter five that we covered as a concept without using the tool that showed up in our textbook. So that's it for chapter eight. Um, if you look back at all of the different examples, you can kind of group them into the type of problem that we had. And the, the easiest uh, categories would be kind of simple slash standard um, collisions, two-step problems, really important, really useful, and uh, the toughest concept type. Then more recently, we have elastic collisions, a little bit more algebra, two equations, two unknowns, and um, two-dimensional collisions, which require us to think a little bit more about vectors than we've had to for most of the rest of this chapter. So make sure that you're watching all of those example problems, trying them on your own, asking for help uh, for your instructors, and we will um, see you in the next chapter. Thanks for watching.